Alrighty, hey AP Chemists, this is the last part four of part one summer work information lecture. We're going to be talking about significant figures and significant measurements. Before I go into that, I did want to show you two answers to help you out with questions 11 and 12. I know 11 and 12 were tough, but if you want to take a picture, screenshot, pause it so you can get the answer, here is my work through for questions 11 and 12. For 11, I told you the hint was start with 14 pounds. I circled and highlighted all of the conversion factors that I used. I actually highlighted them in pink. So for 11, I started with 14 pounds. The only conversion factor that had pounds in it was the 2.2 pounds for one kilogram. I converted that to kilograms. Then I wanted to see how many milligrams was the recommended dose. So I multiplied by 15 divided by one. And then for every 80 milligrams, there's 0.8 milliliters. So I was able to say 95.4 milligrams times 0.80 divided by 80. And I was able to get 0.954 milliliters. And then 12 was a very similar question. 11 and 12 were tough, but very similar questions. All right, let's jump into significant figures. You may or may not have heard about significant figures by now, but significant figures are all of the measurements you know for sure, plus one estimated digit. So all measured numbers you know for sure, plus one and only one estimated digit. And as you could see in this example here, the last digit is always the estimated digit. Or I would, let me say the last non-zero digit is the estimated digit, okay? Um, there are some rules with if I had a number, how many significant figures or how many significant digits are in the number. So for example, all non-zero digits are significant. Here are some examples, and they're in hot pink here. So 28.03 definitely count as significant. Five and four definitely count as significant. Interior zeros, that means sandwiched zeros. Zeros between two non-zero digits are significant. So in the number 408, that zero is significant. Leading zeros are not significant. Leading zeros are the numbers that are zeros that come in front of non-zeros. They only serve to locate a decimal point. And then trailing zeros um, after a decimal point are always significant. Before a decimal point are always significant. And after a non-zero number. And before an implied decimal point are ambiguous and should be avoided. So the number 1200 is ambiguous. I would need a decimal point. AP Chemistry, they'll make sure to have that. Here are some more examples, and, and we'll be able to count. We'll do plenty more examples in a moment. But the number 23.5, that has three significant figures. I'm going to try and highlight them all in, let's do purple. I'm going to use a little small one here. So here we go. Oops. We got one two, three, three sig figs. The number 23.50, that has four significant digits. One, two, three, four. 402 has three significant figures. One, two, three. The number 5,200, without a decimal point, we could really only say that the five and the two are significant. If I had a decimal point, then those two zeros at the end would be significant, but they are trailing. The number 0 .030 has two significant digits. Let's highlight them. The three and the zero after. Those zeros that come before non-zeros are not significant. The three, which is a non-zero, is significant. And any zero that comes after non-zeros after a decimal point are significant. Um, let's look at the number 0 .0070080. This says it has five significant digits. Let's identify them. One, two, three, four, five. These zeros in the front are not significant. Oops, I forgot to highlight this. The zeros in the front are not significant. Seven is the first non-zero digit, and now everything after that will be considered significant. So the seven, the zero, zero, eight, and zero, all significant digits, right? So um, if I had a number that was like 0 
This number only has one sig fig. It's that number five. All those zeros are not significant. Okay. All righty. Let's talk about significant figures and measurements. If I need to, and this is very important for the AP exam. This is like screaming at you. Screams sig fig question. I don't know if you saw in the title of the notes, and I'll flip it back, but this is one point on the entire AP exam, so I'm going to give it one point of a lecture here. Remember, significant figures are all the digits you know for sure. All digits you know for sure plus one estimated digit. Well, for us, all of the digits we know for sure come from tick marks or measurements. And then the estimated one is where we guess. We're like, eh, point something, point five something. So let's look at this example here with the paper clip. What numbers do I know for sure for the length of this paper clip in centimeters? Well, I know the two for sure. For sure. There are no other tick marks that I know for sure, so now I have to guess on whatever that is. So I would say two point... I'm going to go with two centimeters. Notice how I have the number that... I, oops. The number that I know for sure... Trying to highlight this. The number I know for sure plus the estimated digit. This only has two significant figures. I guessed on that point too. Let's look at something else. If I get more tick marks, I could have more sig figs. Again, significant figures are significant digits. So I know this paperclip, I know the two for sure. And then I actually know one, two, I know at least the point three mark. So I know the two and I know the three and now I have to guess. It looks like it's a little bit beyond that 0.3 mark. I would say maybe less than the 0.5. So I'm going to say this is 2.34 centimeters. I guessed on the 4. So this 4 is my estimated digit. And then this 2 and the 3 are my known digits because they are tick marks. This measurement will have three sig figs. Remember, when I make a measurement, it's all of the digits I know for sure plus one estimated digit. Let's look at a graduated cylinder. If you're not familiar, a graduated cylinder measures volume. So I see a 35. Let's see, each marking is 36, 37, 38. Yeah, this is 36, 37, 38, 39, and then 40. For me, I know it's at the 36 for sure. It's between 36 and 37, and now I have to guess. So I know the 36 for sure, and now I'm going to guess somewhere between 0.1 and 0.9. I'm going to say it's at like the halfway mark. So this becomes 36.5. The 36 are the digits that I know for sure, and the 0.5 is the number that I guessed on. This is three sig figs. Let's look at this. This is a burette. And the way that we read burets are downwards. Look at how it goes from 46 to 47, right? So this is 46. This is 46.1, 2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And then this is 47. So the way that I would read this number is... I know for sure, let's see, 46.567. I know for sure this is about 46 point, I would say it's a little bit um, more than the 0. 0.8. I know these digits for sure because I know the 46 and I know the 0. 0.8 mark here. So now I have to guess on one more digit. I'm going to say it's like a, I'm going to erase this so you can see. I'm going to say it's a little bit below that. So I'm going to say 46.81. That's four sig figs. Again, that eight was my estimated digit. I knew the 46 and I knew the 0.8. I had to guess on the 0.1. And let's do this last one. 
20, this will be 30, 40, this is 50. Let's see, this is 40 and this is 50. Uh, there's nothing else smaller. This goes up by tens. I'm going to say I only know the four for sure for, in the 40s. So I have to guess somewhere between 40 and 50. I'm going to say 43, and this is a beaker, which measures volume in milliliters. So I'll say 43 milliliters, where the three is the estimated digit, and this is two sig figs. All righty, last thing I'll teach you are calculations involving sig figs. There are just some very quick and simple rules for us to do um, calculations with sig figs. If I'm doing multiplication, the result carries the... I'm going to highlight this. If I'm doing multiplication or division, the result carries out the same number of significant figures as the factor with the fewest significant figures. So look at the example here. I have 1.052 that has four sig figs. One and zero and five and two are all are sig figs. 12.504, five sig figs, times 0.53. That has two significant figures. If I have four sig figs times five sig figs times two sig figs, my answer needs to be in two sig figs, the least number if it's multiplication or division same thing with division i have five six figs divided by three sig figs my answer needs to be in three sig figs addition and subtraction is a little bit different i'm going to highlight this with a different color in addition and subtraction the result carries the same number of decimal places as the quantity with the fewest decimal places. So I'm not doing sig figs. I'm doing decimal places. And I'm going to do the math here. In this first one, I have 2.345. That's 3 dp is decimal place. dp is decimal place. 2.345 has three decimal places. 0 0.07 has two decimal places. And then 2.9975 has four decimal places. If I'm going to do 2.345 plus 0 0.07 plus 2.9975, I need to express my answer with the least number of decimal places, which is 2. And that's why I have 5.41 is my answer. It should be 2 decimal places. Look at the next one. I have 1 decimal place and 3 decimal places. If I'm doing this subtraction, my answer needs to be in 1 decimal place. So just very simp uh, simple examples there. And th that's the basic you'll need to know for AP chemistry. Um, it talks about rounding here and avoiding errors. It's fine. Um, let's focus on making sure that we could do some of the exercises. So now what I'd like you to do uh, is move on to doing these exercises. Um, if yours is not printed out in color or you can't see it, you could pause to try and read questions 13 and 14 and their measurements. Uh, make sure you could do 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, and 22. And that really ends our summer work part one slash four lectures. Make sure you are able to do the preparing for basics quiz at the end of every one of our summer work parts. These three questions are very eerily similar to what's going to be on your basics quiz when we return from the summer. So make sure you're able to answer questions one through three in your notes. And you could check your answers with me throughout the summer or in the beginning of the school year. I want to help you by doing some of your significant figures work here. Um, so I'm going to skip on down to number 16. It says, how many significant figures are in each number? A, I have 0 0.1111. This should have four sig figs. These ones are all significant. That zero is not. 0 0.007, this has one sig fig. The seven is significant. The zeros are not. 108,700, I'm going to say only four sig figs. There's no decimal point. So those zeros at the end are just placeholders. Oops, I'm going to go back. No decimal point. So those zeros at the end are just placeholders, and they're not significant. Um, I have this big number, which has a decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has seven sig figs. And then this last one, only three sig figs. Those two zeros on the end are just placeholders. Let's do a calculation so we get that. I have 89.3 times 77.0. 
times 0 0.08. This has three sig figs. This has three sig figs. This has one sig fig. My answer needs to be in one sig fig. If I plug this into a calculator, 89.3 times 77.0 times 0 0.08, I get 550.088. Now, how in the world can I turn 550.088 into only one significant figure? And that's going to happen through rounding. I have to round this to the nearest number that'll give me one significant figure, 600. 600 has one sig fig, the end. Or I could say five times 10 to the second, six times 10 to the second. These both have one significant figure. Let's do division, 453, which has three sig figs, 2.031, which has four sig figs. If I do 453 divided by 2.031, I get 223.042836. So many digits. I need to express my answer with three significant figures, so it'll just be 223. Let's do some addition and subtraction. In 21, I'll have, remember, addition and subtraction, we use least decimal places for addition and subtraction. So if I do B, I'll have, I have one decimal place, two decimal place, two decimal place. That means my answer better be in one decimal place. So 12, 39.3 plus 9.73 plus... 3.42 and I get 1252.45 but if I need to make it into one decimal point I do 1252.5 let me do addition and subtraction here I have zero decimal places one decimal place and three decimal place that means my answer is going to be a whole number no decimal places so 532 uh, plus 7.3 minus 48.523, I get 490.777, which I would just turn that into 491, zero decimal places, done. Alrighty, hopefully this was helpful. Make sure you're able to do the other exercises and you'll eventually turn those in. And then, like I said, you should be doing the preparing for basics quiz questions. These questions are going to look eerily similar to your basics quiz when you come in from summer work break and this will help you prepare for that basics quiz.